Greetings. Welcome to ITR Live. I'm your host, Chris Hagan, and we are back here in Studio 130 for another fun-filled, action-packed episode of Iowa's favorite conservative podcast. I'm joined here in studio with John Hendrickson and Chris Ingstead, and we're ready for another uh, wonderful Friday episode of, uh, of the podcast. John, you ready? I am. Chris? Let's go. Good. All right. I'm going to try something a little different today. Instead of waiting until the very end, I'm going to remind everyone that we are on uh, YouTube, that we're on iTunes, we're on Spotify, we're on every audio platform, we're on Rumble, we're on all the major video platforms. And so go in there, check us out, and uh, give us the five-star review, like, and subscribe, and all that. So I'm going to try and change Good. up the order there, rather than wait until the end when everyone's tuned out. Yeah, I think people to- are paying attention more now. I think so. Yeah. Or we just lost them because I it was all this shameless self promotion at the outset. But anyway, uh, okay, I want to start off with something. We're going to get into tax policy. So I had someone the other day ask me like, "Well, what do you guys talk about on your podcast?" I said, "Well, taxes. Like it's kind of what we do." And like, hey, you know, I try to mix in some other stuff that's at least relevant in Iowa national politics. So, uh, John, I know you saw this one, and I, th- I think Chris did too. But um, is that kind because of, I offered you corrections on what was actually in the article? Yeah, I think that's why okay. I took my cue yeah. from on that. Okay. So um, so I'm going to read a headline from the Des Moines Register. State party chair calls on University of Iowa Democrats to resign after anti-Semitic post. So what happened here is the uh, University of Iowa Democrats uh, took to uh, social media to post a statement about the uh, Israeli-Palestinian conflict. So I'm going to read this because this is really good stuff, John. Yeah. All right. You got this was also on uh, Channel Eight last night. Well, so so you've seen yes. this. Okay, yeah. good. Yeah. We can. Yeah. <laughs> this is University of Iowa Democrats. We shamelessly and fully support Palestine. We recognize that every person has the unalienable right to life, liberty, pursuit of happiness, just as the United States has. They long stand for. Okay, fine, whatever. Uh, the ongoing violence against millions of innocent people is egregious, and the perpetuation of it by the United States of America and other Western states is even more so. We have been taught the stories of mass murders and genocides of people around the world, including those of the United States. We now bear witness to those same systems of oppression taking place in a nation thousands of miles from our own. We will no longer watch in silence while atrocities are committed against men, women, and children. We will protest, advocate, and fight for the human rights of all and for the human rights of Palestine. And then this is the key phrase. Well, that, what that, is it? Is it human rights for all or human rights for Palestine? No, no, because no. Those are in All doesn't complete. include Israeli families that were subject to torture and all sorts of barbarism. The, 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 this is how it concludes. May every Palestine, Palestinian live long and free from the river to the sea, which is the, the key phrase here that, that uh, the pro-Palestinians love to love to trumpet. John, what is what is uh, from the river to the sea mean? Well, you know, this I, I'm not really sure. I think it means a Palestinian homeland. Well, but it, this I think is that's a, what they want us to believe is what is that a, means. Uh, this is a term that I just sort of became familiar with this week. So this so is, I don't know the background. And, to and it. so I think I wonder if even some of these folks that are out protesting on behalf of, of quote unquote Palestine, which doesn't really exist, and I'm not sure if it really has existed, but but we'll we'll use the term very loosely right now, has been a rallying cry to drive Jews specifically off of the land between the Jordan River mm. and the sea, which means they would no longer they would cease to exist in that region of the, of the world. It is a rallying cry for the end of the Jewish state and the extermination of any Jew that should be remaining living there. That's a little out there. Yeah. Especially in a statement where you're talking about genocide. Yes. Yeah. So, well, this is a snapshot of, uh, I mean, a local example. Uh, I mean, we had some, there was a, I think, a communist group that was doing protests yeah. um, in Des Moines. But, uh, uh, but this is an example of a problem the larger Democratic Party is having with their extreme wing. And yeah. uh, uh, so, uh, you know, you saw, I think, uh, I forget the gentleman's name, but the radical professor who yeah. who's running as an independent now, uh, he was marching with a group of people chanting that slogan as well. Yeah. And so we're seeing, um, you know, an extreme side of the Democratic Party that's embracing some of this... Uh, anti-Israel uh, rhetoric as yeah. well as ideology that's being uh, 
promoted by the pro-Palestine. Yeah. You know, we've lobby. seen this. We've seen this around the country with uh, you know protests and whatnot. It's it's really moved. I clearly, and I'm not necessarily saying that the University of Iowa College Democrats because I don't know, but we have seen this in a great many places. Mm-hmm. This has moved far beyond yes. anti-Israel. Well, it this also, is anti-Semitic. Yes, they, are, yeah. they are literally and it, beginning to assault it, Jews on college campuses. Yes, and it, it just shows how radical some of these yeah. uh, students have become on on our college campuses. Yes, absolutely. Cornell West. Good. That was the yeah. That's right. Camp. That's right. Chris. <clears throat> There have been assaults on college campuses and elsewhere for years. Sure. And frankly, there have even been um, anti-Semitic assaults. I mean, the, the Bible's full of thousands of years of history of it. And those things are wrong and bad. Where we've taken a new turn, I think, today, or maybe not, maybe it's one of the same, but is that as it's going on, these people are justifying it and celebrating it and trying to claim to be that they're on the right side of things. Yep. Right. In other words, they don't just want to be a bully. They want to be a bully and, and sort of be justified for it. That's right. So you get the, the, the predictable dust up on social media, push back on this statement. And uh, Republican Party chair uh, Jeff Kaufman took to Twitter and, you know, rightfully called this out. You know, like th- these folks, this isn't this isn't a radical college professor here. I mean, this is a group that operates sanctioned by the Iowa Democratic Party. I mean, I think that's very important. They're using using all of that credibility here and said, you know, w- what's going on? And, and calling out Rita Hart, chairman of the Democratic Party, hasn't said anything about this. So ultimately, after this, Rita Hart has a statement. And I think after being sort of guilted into it by the Republican Party chair, I think she she largely got it right in the end. I mean, she was pretty forceful that we that that phrase is anti-Semitic. It's hateful and we don't condone it at all. So the University of Iowa Democrats try to back up a little bit, but they're just Kind they of, can't help themselves. No, they that, can't. You know. They they focus on well, it wasn't our that phrase wasn't our intention to to be hateful, and so we'll reword this a little bit. Never mind all of the hate that's otherwise. When we read the whole statement, you know, it's blaming the United States for all of this oppression and and genocide, and and it's just it's mind blowing how how leftist this is. And so, do this looks are they skipping over what Hamas did? To yeah, kind of there's no statement. Of the, I mean, well over a thousand Jewish citizens were tortured and murdered here, right? We still have sub, dozens of hostages, including American citizens, being held. No mention of any of that, right? It's all justified. Is that the takeaway? We're supposed to, it's, well, I, I just as, wanna, as if this was unprovoked action by Israel, I guess. Yeah, and so, so I want what I want to kind of get at here is that if you if you just watch KCCI, John. Mm-hmm or whatever your preferred legacy media outlet is, you would be left with the, with the, the idea that it's the Republican Party that is so extreme and out of control and can't control certain elements of the party. But this is, this is official action of the Iowa Democratic Party and its affiliates. And their affiliates aren't backing down. So you have the uh, Iowa Democratic Party's Progressive Caucus, which I think is the rebranded and sanitized version of the communists that you were talking about. Uh, And they said, we would like to unequivocally say that we stand in solidarity with the university Democrats and will protest any effort to coerce a resignation from anyone in that organization. And they proceed to call out Rita Hart for her statement. So this is another... I mean, these are folks that are actually, you know, presumably delegates to the actual Iowa Democratic Party who are calling out their own state party chair. And I I guess what's fascinating to me is the real division that exists in the Democratic Party today over Israel and Hamas. And now the leaders, I, I think, have largely been at least in their statements on the right side from President Biden down to yeah. Rita Hart. I don't, I think know. They, I don't know. Blinken I, I, is starting to come out yeah. today. Well, because yeah. they have to manage. This is what sometimes folks miss is the the tightrope walk that these party leaders sometimes have to do for these different factions of their party. And, and the, you hear about in, the in big fairs, tent. Yeah, that dynamic exists for leaders 
of all states. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, all the way back to leading a caucus at the Iowa State Capitol. I yeah. mean, you have different people that think different things, and you've got to try to bring them together yeah. to get anything done. I get it. It's the nature of representative government and democracy and all of that. But well, but there is a real rift here. Yeah. And when it spills out into a front page article in Des Moines Register, where you can't even kind of get in line with a statement from your party chairman, or, or frankly, even some of the things that are coming out of the White House, that's a real issue. It is, yeah. And I, I just want to build on something that Chris said, and that this is, uh, uh, you know, what what's going on has also been applied to evangelical Christians. By yes. the far left. I mean, yeah. whether it's uh, you know uh, pro-life uh, or uh, people just espousing traditional Christian views have been have been attacked as well uh, on college campuses and, and even uh, even some of the policies coming out of this current administration. Uh, and so there's been a hostility, uh, I think, to uh, especially the religious liberty of many evangelical Christians for the liberal thought leaders in academia or even in the party. If you own a Bible and have not publicly condemned Donald Trump, you are a Christian nationalist. Mm. Do I have that right? Yes. I mean, that's, I that's mean, there, there is, yes, they, they want yeah. to, because, and some of it is to try and cover up their own problems, but it, this is, you'll always have divisions in a party. But I think what, what might be lost with folks out there right now is just how big of a problem Democrats have on this issue. Absolutely. And there was an article of uh, this, and I forget where it was, but uh, it, it's a shame the Biden administration is politicizing this because they're saying, well, maybe we should be careful on how we approach the Israel question because we could possibly lose Michigan because of such a the yeah. uh, right. Arab, <laughs> Arab population there. Why don't you, just, so, do what, what, why don't you so, just do the right thing, you yeah. guys? Just do I, the right thing. I am here for thoughtful leadership. I am here for, you know what, we're not just going to race into another war. I, I, and we're going we're gonna to be careful. We're going to talk to everybody. Yes to all of that. But a really big chunk of base Democrats have no time for that. They want reflexive support for Hamas. Let's face yeah. it, for the terrorists yeah. in this. And condemnation up to and including genocidal statements. Yes. Well, look at, of Jews, yeah, I, that's a pretty big divide to cover over. Yeah. And l l look at just the extremists of the the, the so-called squad members. Yeah, I mean the the rhetoric of Representative that's Omar right. and yeah, I mean just very. Uh, <laughs> We're, uh, we're going to get back. We're going to get to Minnesota Democrats by the end of this uh, okay. episode, Good. John. I Good. want you I want you to yeah. can hold yeah. on to some of that zeal. So here. We're, we're seeing <laughs> I, I would just and this is probably going to be controversial. So I apologize. But we're seeing the consequence of of one this ideology of multiculturalism that has uh, torn down our higher education. And then also uh, this is a consequence of mass immigration this uh what's yeah. occurring and because we're, we're seeing examples of this anti-semitism coming both in europe and in the united states as a result of unlimited immigration of, oh. of, i mean and just you know representative omar is one example of that john i can safely tell you that our listeners don't tune in to have you apologize for well. throwing out red meat okay <laughs> i think i think that's what they're here for so uh, I think we should go for it. Any uh, closing comments before we get to the the real uh, meat of the today's episode? No. Okay. I, I think I think we're going to be coming back to this again in the future because this. You don't this, think this is going to get resolved? No, next, I don't. By, I by don't. And, and I will give uh, Democrats credit. I think, and I said earlier, I think their their official messaging has been at least pretty good on this once they get around to it. I think they it took some public shaming to get there, but Rita Hart did get there. Um, Your whole point is the divide. The divide is yeah. there. But, and I also, uh, you know, where we go from here is still uh, very fascinating. I mean, you've got the president going into a reelection where you have significant pieces of his base that are now kind of, almost in, in open revolt over this. And, uh, and we are just in, you know, early innings of this conflict in the Middle East. There's a whole lot of their twists and turns that are coming up down the road. So, uh, yeah, it's going to spill out into not just who wins Michigan, but it's going to spill out into uh, 
the broader uh, political narrative over the next probably years. So anyway, uh, had a really good article that we shared around the office. I think came out yesterday in The Economist. Yeah. Um, there's the the uh, in The Economist liberal publication but, but serious but, journalism but serious journalism thoughtful trying to it, get to the heart of the matter um, here's the here's the headline a tax cutting wave is sweeping over America's states and I think if you've listened to this show and uh, followed the organizations you know where we're going with this is Iowa's uh, track record on tax reform over the last several years. And the phrase that, John, you like to come back to is Iowa is the... We're the gold standard. We're the gold standard. Yeah. yeah. So um, now the economists didn't see fit to put that terminology no, no, in the but article. They, they, did, uh, they did acknowledge that Iowa is the leader. Yeah. So uh, I go oh, take, yeah. take it away so there, John. I, you know, I, I thought this was an interesting article in many ways. Uh, one, it acknowledges Iowa being the national leader in state-based tax reform. Um, and he also had some very, I thought, some very good quotes from our governor and Majority Leader Jack Whitmer, who were both interviewed for this piece. Uh, and it also, uh, I, I thought it was interesting how they're framing this, uh, <clears throat> because they're basically arguing that Iowa is now uh, uh, the great experiment and yeah. whether or not uh, is the governor and basically ITR correct that these taxes are will result in good policies or is it as our our uh, 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 opponent on the opposite side mr owen from common good iowa correct that there's a day of reckoning coming and that this is going to blow a huge hole in the budget and we're going to be kansas on steroids and and i would argue that uh that's that's not going to be the case it's almost like he's cheering that on yes absolutely and and basically he's saying that uh you know, not only will the flat tax of 3.9% favor the the uh, wealthy, which, uh, I mean, we we actually had some professionals do some modeling on that. And that's mm-hmm. just not the case. But also uh, uh, he's saying that it's going to end up in draconian budget cuts, namely to education I don't... and health care. And, and right now uh, those areas have not seen reductions in spending. And I, I, don't... Don't, I don't think he actually said cuts. I think here, and here's the nuance, and here's where I go, I think we're already starting to win on this. One, I like the fact that The Economist kind of closed the article with like, we'll see, might work, might not, yep. as opposed to already writing off that this is doomed to fail. But he, he said they're but, coming. But, he no, said no, they're coming. He, here's well, what Mike Owen said. did. Mike, Mike but Owen the, did. the article yes. didn't. No, the article yeah. didn't. But, but, but here's, here's, I think, was his bigger point, was not that our budget is going to end up underwater. Because as, as, as Senator Whitmer was quoted in there, look, we've had three rounds of tax cuts, and our revenues keep on growing, right? This is not taking a step right. backwards the state budget. And, and as Senator Whitmer pointed out, we've continued to invest into these big budget areas like health care and like education. Yeah. I, I think what Owen was trying to say was like, well, that's fine. I mean, he's almost acknowledged like, well, we're probably not going into Kansas mode where you have to make right. big cuts. What he's trying to say is, well, yes, but we want or we should have more money into education or porn or right. more money into health care. And you know what? Let's have that debate. Yeah, and and the voters can decide if we're funding things at the right level or – if they want it, if they think the state should take more money and give it to education or health care or, or fill in the blank. And, and I've had this conversation with Mike Owen on this issue. Yes. And, and I think it is an honest, uh, just a, a philosophical difference about the role of government in Absolutely. society and its size and its scope. But it is a, a perfectly tenable position that you think that more tax money should be collected from the citizens and doled out for whatever government purpose you see fit. And but here, here's what he says, and I, I think he's wrong, but something has to give, whether it's education or health care or something else, a crash is coming. Well, again, I, I think what he really means, and don't quote me anymore and prove me wrong, John, to our listeners, okay? Just, you know, you can do that off the air. But, but again, I, I think what he's really trying to say is not so much we're going to have to slash the budget, but we're not going to give it enough more dollars. I think that's really what he's trying And I almost think that's a win for our side of things already where you know they have to acknowledge that we're probably not going to be Kansas and yeah. actually moving back. No, well, I, I, and, and I, I well and we're not and we have we've demonstrated that uh in in our writings in our in, in on this show we had uh, and you know what and we're not going to even as we continue to go on right. because Chris I know you had conversations this week with multiple people who are going to have a say in this and John, you did as well. Okay, 
I haven't left the office. <laughs> but but the people who are involved in, in the next round of tax reform, they're very thoughtful of this. They are very cognizant of what's going on and what we want to continue to do as a state. Even, yes, investing in education and health care, but also finding a way to continue to reduce the tax burden. They are not going – no one is going into this blindly or irresponsibly. I mean, well, you guys I'll, had the conversation. I will, Am okay. I correct? I'm, I'm going to start here. I – no, I'm not. First, I want to know if I was correct on that. You are, okay, and I'm good. not. I'm not taking credit for anything. But you know, I was sitting in the room when we talked about the 2018 tax bill, which started this off, and the top of mind thing we, we that was that was right in front of us was, can we afford this over the long term? What do the projections look like? It, it, using the terminology, we, we would get runs from the Department of Revenue. What does this look like? You put this into place. What are we going to need in the future? for responsible or reasonable growth in government. And what do we think after we pass this tax bill, how much, what's our revenue going to look like after that? And we wanted to make sure that it worked. Mm -hmm. And I know from having talked to the folks that have continued to negotiate these and, and craft these deals that have come afterwards is they are thinking about that every time. And I was going to mention, you know, going back to the last time we had ITR tax day, we had Department of Management Director Craig Paulson come in, who's the person that watches the state's budget start and he talked about the the growth in spending on its current trajectory and the growth in tax revenue on its current trajectory and he told us those lines do not converge we don't on the current tax bill we can pay for every for a anticipated growth in spending it may not be as much as some would like no we cannot cover a four five six percent annual growth in state expenditures but we can cover a historical appropriate average. We can and keep that's growing. And that's what we're talking about. So the idea that a crash is coming is simply not in the data in front of us. Yeah. And and it so I, I it's well, just it's just incorrect. <clears throat> yeah. The other thing is you can look at what other states are doing. And uh, uh, you know, if if the formula that Common Good Iowa and other leftist organizations support then uh, why why is California in the state it is? Why is yeah. Illinois? Why why is uh, our neighbors in Minnesota losing population? Uh, we have almost gained close to eight thousand people last year from Illinois who've come to Iowa. Uh, we businesses in Minnesota are starting to look at Iowa and in South Dakota as alternatives because the uh, the uh, the tax and spend agenda there. So. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the old, tired, progressive playbook of tax and spend just simply does not work. I don't see any evidence for that. And, and you know what? It goes beyond tax and spending. I mean, there's different regu regulatory uh, changes, and there, there's other things that we have done in Iowa that signals to the world, hey, we're open for business. Yeah. You know, we, we want your families to come here. We want your businesses to come here. Come here and grow, and we're not getting your way. We are going to keep empowering you. And I think kind of the the – collective impact of that message is much greater than you know the sum of all the different parts yeah so and, and the key to all this i i would say and, and this is where i think the uh the importance of iowa's story is is even though we've done these good things on on taxes it, it's it really the heart of it is controlling spending yep. yeah and, the, and that is uh i mean it's not exciting but this is where the governor and the legislature have really done a great job of holding the line on spending and uh, uh, making sure that they respond, you know, responsibly budget the priorities of the state, and in return, we're able to do these good pro-growth tax reforms that benefit everyone. You know, I'm going to take issue with one thing you said there, John. Oh boy. As a former legislator, sometimes saying no to spending requests was kind of fun. <laughs> <laughs> now we're not doing that one. Yeah. So it's, sometimes it's yeah. fun. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Uh, so I wanted to you talked a little bit about economic growth and the article I think frames this up and you, you, you touched this at the beginning, Chris, is that over the past decade, the article says America's low tax states, notably Texas and Florida have generally been its fastest growers. We've talked about that a lot, John, both in terms of population and economic size. And that is about more than taxes, which it absolutely is. It's about workforce. And as they say, weather and low housing costs, although housing costs are property taxes aside, fairly affordable in Iowa, but it's a tougher test for the benefits of lower taxes because yeah, here, I think 
what they're sort of doing is criticizing Iowa without really saying it. So we're not Texas and Florida. No, we don't have, you know, six months of hundred plus degree temperatures and unending summers in Texas. And we don't have, you know, alligators and swamps, but, but we're Iowa and we're not, we don't, we're not terrible. It's actually a nice place to live. So the, what they're saying is that, well, we'll, the, where we'll really find out the benefit of lower taxes if people actually want to move to Iowa of all places. And I think they will. And I think we'll find out as Iowa continues to grow. Um, you talked about Minnesota, John. I'm, I, I've always got to give you a chance to to jump in on this one. But even the economist here uh, reported and talked about something that you've mentioned a couple of times here on the show, uh, contrasting Iowa and Minnesota, and said Minnesota, one of the few states moving sharply in the opposite direction. Democrats there have pursued one of America's most left-wing apology left-wing policy agendas seen in recent years. Rather than converting their fiscal surpluses into across-the-board tax cuts, they have rapidly increased spending levels. Minnesota's latest biennial budget expenditures are 38% higher than its, than its previous one. So you really have two paths. We're going to cut taxes because we have this budget surplus in Iowa, we're giving it back to the taxpayer. In Minnesota, they're spending it on growing yeah. government. Yeah, and and we'll right. find out. I, I, I would like to see the article, you know, talking about cautionary tale, that Iowa may end up being a cautionary tale. But why don't we worry about the cautionary tale of turning Minnesota into a place where they can't? What if Minnesota's revenue can't support 38% right. growth year over year and they have to start cutting back? What then? Right. John. So, and that's exactly what's happening in California. Right. And, and obviously... And some of these other blue states. Yeah. They just crank up the spending with, yeah. you know, oh, and, I, it'll probably work and, out. And Minnesota's losing population. They almost lost their congressional seat in the last census. And I believe they're projected to in 2030, correct? I think so. Yeah. Whereas Iowa up. is projected to maintain and continues yeah. to grow, albeit at a, at a relatively slow rate. But uh, it and, will and be very, you know, the, yeah. The population projections are interesting there because it shows that uh, they're not necessarily, I mean, they're going to some to Wisconsin which is higher tax, but yeah. most are going to South Dakota or Iowa, yeah. away further from the Twin yeah. Cities. You know, I think, one, you start comparing the two states, and, and comparing to that's that's fine and that's good, but we shouldn't make the mistake of thinking that there is one right way to do it or every state should look the same. It is quite possible that some portion of people, and we'll just call them Minnesotans, like that style of government, think that's the right way to be, and, and, and that's where they will live. And they're, you know, even though we're right next to each other, you know, this other group called Iowans could like their government to move in the opposite direction. Mm -hmm. and, and neither one is necessarily wrong as long as you're serving, you know, your people. So if you like it and you keep reelecting the people to move in that direction, then yeah. so be it. And I guess what I'd say is in Iowa, we have continued to elect and reelect the people who are moving in the direction that, that we like to see. And so, you know, there you go. And if you believe that people will vote with their feet, we'll find out. We'll vote with their feet, their you know, pocketbook. Uh, and you could have people in vastly different states that are both happy and then great. Yeah, I guess that's just I, fine. That's right. So uh, it's a good article. I, I would encourage folks to read it. Um, it's, a I think, a pretty fair look at what's happening. As uh, as they say at the front end, Iowa is playing an outsized role in a bigger debate about how American states ought to manage their revenues and spending. And that's what we've been saying yep. is, okay, America, if you're looking at tax cuts, why don't you take a look at the gold standard, which is Iowa, because we've, we've done it. So, um, and there might be more on the horizon. We're going to keep working on that as well. So, gentlemen, that's all I got today. Um, wow, we, we went over time, got going on. Uh, we did. We just lost our backdrop. Oh, that's, how that's, long terrible. We went, so that's terrible. That's we terrible. Well, better, better hit end right we now. better hit end right now. So, well, thank you for joining us, uh, gentlemen. Thank you for joining us, listeners. And, uh, yeah, again, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that, we will see you next time on ITR Live.